Perhaps the most iconic aspect of the Real Housewives universe is the tagline. It makes the show instantly recognizable. If the show is spoofed, you're gonna get taglines. I don't need to rub a lamp to get what I want. If there's a non-Housewife celebrity guest on the Bravo Late Night Show, Watch What Happens Live, rest assured that Andy Cohen will ask them what their tagline would be. I'm done with mugshots and I'm ready for an Oscar. <laughs> it's a common question in Housewives discussion forums like Reddit and in Facebook groups. We, as a community, cannot get enough of taglines. They're a vital part of the preseason, with fans like me harassing Andy ad nauseum to release whatever upcoming season's taglines will be. So, in this video, I thought it would be fun to do a super deep dive into this aspect of the Real Housewives universe. Let's start with a quick history lesson. So, taglines were included within our beloved show right from the very first episode when Vicki Gunvalson expressed her concern over her own mortality. I don't want to get old. When New York premiered two years later, the tradition continued on, being further legitimized by Atlanta, then New Jersey, until it was clear that this was a staple of the franchise. At first, producers just took lines the women said in the show. Are the police involved? You can actually hear New York legend Alex McCord say a reverse version of her tagline. In New York, status is everything to a certain group of people. To a certain group of people in New York, status is everything. So it was clear that there was a bit of chopping and screwing going on. The Countess Luann, who had an extremely bratty tagline. I never feel guilty about being privileged. Has claimed that it was clipped to not show the entirety of her statement, which was a bit more palatable. Something else I found interesting with the early seasons was the reusing of taglines. OC didn't actually do this, they've had new ones with every single season, but New York kept the same ones for the first three seasons. Atlanta had a set for seasons one and two, then a new set for seasons three and four, then began getting new ones with each season with season five, when the intro was given a major makeover. New Jersey also reused taglines for its first two years, but all other franchises got new taglines each year. I'm not sure what the reasoning is on why this was done differently, but my best guess is that it was the choice of the production company rather than Bravo's to account for the inconsistency. Either way, it was around 2012 that all of the franchises gave each housewife a brand new tagline with each season. This is something that's pretty unique to Housewives. Sister Wives had taglines too, but they were kind of lame, and to my knowledge, they kept the same ones each year until eliminating them completely. But I'm not a huge Sister Wives person, so correct me if I'm wrong on that. I couldn't find many other shows that use this the way that Housewives does, but if you can think of any, let me know. I've read conflicting things as to where the taglines officially come from, but the best truth I could find is that the housewives suggest a few, but the decision ultimately comes down to production. We sometimes see the housewives, especially the Beverly Hills housewives, attempting to crowdsource ideas via Twitter, but that could just be to drum up interest in the show. So now that our history lesson is complete, let's move on to taxonomy. So as I reviewed every single tagline in every single Bravo produced franchise, I found some patterns amongst the taglines and thought it would be fun to group them together into the major types. I've given them all names, but let's consider this a group workshop, so if you've got better ideas, comment away. I'll give just a few examples of each because I think it would be overkill to include every single tagline in this video, but I do think it would be fun to eventually group them all. Maybe you guys could help with this. Okay, so our first subsection is going to be the expository type of tagline where the housewife uses her tagline to tell us about herself or the location the show takes place in. I'm a ball and gala girl. It's my legacy and my calling. The first of this type is the get to know me. I was a Cowboys cheerleader, but in Dallas, I'm never on the sidelines. This is when a housewife uses her tagline to introduce herself a bit, let us know who she is before her time on the show. Whether in the courtroom or in the kitchen, I bring the heat. We often see these in rookie seasons or premiere seasons, obviously. This was expertly done by the greatest rookie of all time, Kenya Moore. I won Miss USA, not Miss Congeniality. But we've seen many examples throughout the years on different franchises. A twist on this is the you know me from somewhere, which can only be used by a housewife whose fame predates housewives. You've heard a lot about me, but it's only true when it comes from my lips. Some notable examples come from Kim Fields, Faith, family, and career, those are the facts of my life. And Denise Richards, My problem with the tabloids, my real life is so much juicier. But my favorite comes from soap star Eileen Davidson. I'm not a bitch, but I've played one on TV. Next we have the townie. This is where a housewife tells her about her hometown. In Potomac, it's not about who you know. It's who you are, and I'm everything. We often get these in early seasons, as we are still getting to know the locale. Kyle Richards is obviously the queen of this. This town is a game of chess, but no one's taking this queen down. We've heard more and more about what exactly goes on in Beverly Hills over her time on the show. Around here, there's more than just dresses in everyone's closet. One day, I hope she's satisfied that we understand Beverly Hills enough for her to try a new angle. 
I'm born and raised in Beverly Hills. This is my town. Another way a housewife can use her tagline is to let us know what she values. One way is with the focus on the family, where a housewife tells us how important family is to her. If you're going to mess with my family, you're messing with me. We have many examples of this. I am the glue for my wig and my family. Another common value is religion, so many housewives will employ the Jesus take the wheel and have a tagline that tells us about her relationship with God. My faith is strong. And my ass isn't bad either. The best examples come from Mary M. Cosby. I love God, but I will read you like a scripture. If you come for me, I will send Jesus after you. For our career girl housewives, an option is the working girl, in which a housewife references her job or business. My job is about making fast decisions, but my personal life I leave up to destiny. For the postnatal housewife, a common technique is the goo-goo gaga, in which she makes a reference to her new baby. I can handle a baby and women who act like one. These make for cute taglines. The only thing messier than two boys is me. But beware, as it means a housewife is probably going to be boring this season. You ain't had no storyline this season. Mm. Another subsection is the pump me up, in which a housewife uses her tagline to tell us how fabulous she is. Don't hate me because I have it all. Hate me because I'm beautiful. This can be done in a few different ways. The first is the sassy girl, where the housewife makes a cute little comment about how great she is, but delivers it with pizzazz. You don't have to like me. I love myself enough for the both of us. We also have the HBIC. In this town, I'm Queen B and MVP. This is when a housewife tells you exactly who's boss. I have a new king. Good job. Finally! But I'm still the queen of New Jersey. An offshoot of this is the I am very rich. I'm the girl next door. If you live in a big old mansion where a housewife flaunts her wealth via her tagline. I'm an enigma wrapped in a riddle and cash. The next subsection is the reference, where a housewife will use her tagline to reference something that's previously happened on the show. A common use of this is the callback, where a housewife uses her tagline to remind us of past drama or storyline she's had. I used to flip tables. <laughs> now, I'm turning them. But she can also employ the tease, in which she references drama to come on this particular season. If you want to sit at my table, you best mind your manners. Sometimes we may not even realize what our tagline is all about until the season begins to play out. For our more established housewives who have already had capital M moments on the show, she can use her well-established catchphrase to remind us how iconic she is. This phoenix has risen, and I'm saying, bye ashes. The New York girls are really into this. I tell it like it is, but I always make it nice. If you can't be cool, you can't be with the Countess. My favorite referential type of tagline is the only measure it in inches when she uses her tagline to brush off some bad press she may be getting. I plead guilty to being fabulous. This gets to the point of absurdity. The only thing I'm guilty of is being shamazing. Next we've got the call me by my name. If being Sonia is so wrong, why does it feel so right? This is when a housewife refers to herself in third person via her tagline. Life is a runway, and Cynthia Bailey is ready to walk it alone. The recidivism rate is extraordinarily high on this type. Sometimes Sonia has to go commando. What can I say? Seasons may change, but Cynthia Bailey never goes out of style. Our last official subsection is for our mini Shakespeare's out there who wish to employ some use of wordplay in their tagline. The better route is to personalize it a bit and incorporate herself into a common phrase. I may float like a butterfly, but I sting like a bitch. But sometimes this is done in a more generic way. I'm here for a good time, not a long time. A devastating offshoot of this is the oof. You could never be too young, too thin, or too honest. In which a housewife evokes problematic ideas into her tagline. I may not be the sharpest tool in the shed, but I'm pretty. If a housewife is lucky enough to get a second season after an oof, she must once again use her tagline to rectify the situation. Pretty is smarter than you think. This leads into our last most advanced technique, which is only available to long-running housewives, which is the journey. This is when a housewife builds upon a previous year's tagline for several years to give us a fuller picture of the point she's trying to make. This technique, like many housewife things, was pioneered by Tamara Judge, who's led us into how her hotness has evolved over the years. I'm the hottest housewife in Orange County. Housewives come younger, but they don't come hotter. I'm done being the trophy wife. Freedom only makes me hotter. I'm still the hottest housewife in Orange County, and the toughest too. She's also given us a mini arc about her boldness. I'm not getting older, I'm just getting bolder. Mm. Boldness comes at a cost, and I'm willing to pay. 
I believe that it was Giselle Bryant who truly perfected this technique, giving us not one but two journeys. The word on the street is that I'm the word on the street. Word on the street is I'm still the word on the street. If you can't handle me being the word on the street, then stop listening. I'm the baddest thing walking and the smartest one talking. I'm still the baddest thing walking and the most anointed one talking. She seemingly started a new journey with her season 6 tagline, and I'm on the edges of my seat to see if she'll reveal more of her beauty secrets in season 7. The secret to this pretty face is staying in the shade. We seem to be on the precipice of a new journey coming from none other than Gina K on OC. Those who live in small houses should definitely throw stones. I've still got a small house, but I'm living large. We'll have to wait and see if there's more to the small house story she's been pushing. So let's transition to the intro packages themselves and have a brief music lesson. Now, I'm not a super musical person, so if you are and have better ways to describe these little tunes, please do. So OC's is a bit creepy. It has that uncanny Stepford Wives type of feel where something seems a bit off. It's upbeat, but there's an underlying insidiousness to it. Maybe I'm being a bit dramatic. New York's is jazzy, it's classy, it evokes sex in the city. Atlanta's is fun, I like the beat. New Jersey's has an Italian mafioso type vibe. Beverly Hills is poppy, upbeat, and has the luxe factor that the show brings. DC's was pretty lame, but it kind of had government vibes. I think this would have most certainly been updated had the series continued, rest in peace. Miami's first season jingle was absolutely awful, but Queen Adriana saved the day by graciously recording a song they could use instead. It's feminine, it's vibrant, it's colorful, I love it. For Dallas, you know how some people refer to country music as country and western? This definitely has western vibes. Like it seems like you'd hear it at a rodeo, but not at Stagecoach. I think it would be interesting if a Nashville franchise ever were to come to be to see how it would be different. Potomac's is the crown jewel. It's my favorite. It's fierce. It evokes emotion. I just love it. And Giselle's taglines pair very well with it. If you can't handle me being the word on the street. Salt Lake City's feels very wintry. It's choiry to match the religious undertones that haunt the series. It's a good one. Dubai's has that Arabian desert vibe. I kind of wish they went a bit bigger with it, but it works. Let's move on and discuss one of the most iconic and housewife-specific facets about the intros, which is the end lineup where the women show us some item that represents their city. This was obviously a riff on Desperate Housewives, one of the show's obvious inspirations. The Desperate Housewives intro, one of the greatest of all time, in my opinion, ends with the women holding up an apple. And since Real Housewives of Orange County was in Orange County, the women all held up oranges. It was only natural that the Roni ladies held an apple to represent the big apple, and the ATL ladies held a peach given that they were from the peach state. It would seem as if the tradition was official until Jersey premiered when the women held nothing but their hips. The most common online suggestion seemed to be a glass of red wine or a tomato, but Jersey's remained firm in their lack of a symbol. DC also didn't hold anything. They had a messy situation where there wasn't even a consistency with what they did with their hands. I don't know what they could have held, like legal documents maybe, or figurines of statues, I don't know. I don't have a great idea for this, but if you do, let me know. The symbol train got back on track with Beverly Hills when they held diamonds because they're glamorous, duh. And then Miami, which actually had a switch up, holding champagne glasses in season one before they settled on the much cuter mojitos starting with season two. Potomac took over champagne glasses when they joined the scene. I've seen others recommend a cherry blossom flower, and that seems to be the default emoji to represent the series. The champagne glass is fine, I guess, but champagne flutes are just kind of boring to me. Dallas started this CGI trend superimposing stars on the women's hands. Google tells me that there's a Dallas-based ice hockey team called the Stars, but obviously that has nothing to do with it. I don't know, a star kind of feels right for Dallas. I don't really know why. The SLC girls carry a CGI snowflake, which makes sense as it's the cold franchise. If they can evoke a winter wonderland, they will. And last, the Dubai ladies hold gold bars because it's the city of gold. Since it's so fresh, I remember people speculating they'd hold mini camel statues, which would have been absurd, or sand. I think the sand thing could have been cool if it was like falling out of their hands, but alas, they chose the golden route. One other thing I want to touch on with the intros is the inclusion of the women's families. In the early days, families were featured much more heavily, with some getting full scenes and storylines on their own. In the early days of the intros, we get the rest of the family posing in the background, but somewhere along the lines, most series intros got a facelift and ditched the family incorporation. Starting around the time of the Beverly Hills and Miami introduction era, the family stopped being introduced in the intros, and new series didn't include them at all. 
What I find interesting is that both OC and New Jersey have kept the families in to this very day. My best guess for the reason why is that they're the more suburban franchises. New Jersey still really heavily features the husbands, and it seems like OC tries to, though it doesn't always land. And last, let's talk about the meaning that's imbued in the opening sequence. These tell us a lot about who the power players are. This can happen in three ways. First is the placement a housewife falls in the tagline sequence. I think the most prestigious spot is the first one. You start the intro with a bang and are there before people start zoning out. Giselle is the queen of this spot, taking it every single season. It almost always went to Nini as well. The other status spot is the last tagline, but I find this to be a bit less prestigious. Sometimes it goes to the other lead on the show. Kyle and LVP would often trade these spots on Beverly Hills, but I find it also often goes to a newbie that doesn't make a huge impact, so it's a toss-up. The other, more out in front status signifier is the placement of the woman in their object holding lineup. The center spot is one of the highest honors a housewife can receive, especially when there is an even number of housewife and the woman is still pulled out in front, as we've seen happen with both Nini and Candy on Atlanta. It seems as if it's been a slow transition to this being such a signifier of power on the show. In the early days, sometimes it seemed like the lineups were just based on height, but it's gotten to the point now that some women allegedly refuse to pose with their object angled as if they'd be on the side of the lineup, refusing to take anything but the center position. It seems as if the power lies in the center, so the further out you stand, the less importance you have, but this isn't always true. I find it's also not necessarily an indicator of how vital a housewife is that particular season, but rather a view on how much production values them. It's a super big deal to the housewives and fans alike. So that was my dive way deeper than anyone ever needed on the Real Housewives intro. I think some of the women who do taglines best are Lisa Vanderpump, as almost all of them are memorable. The crown is heavy, darlings, so just leave it where it belongs. And she delivers them in such a cheeky way. Life isn't all diamonds and rosé, but it should be. I actually think Siggy Flicker was really great at delivering her taglines as well. Some people think I'm too much. I love it. They're absolutely right. Phaedra Parks' delivery is like transcendental meditation to me. You can't always get what you want, but I can. And Ramona's delivery always makes me laugh. I'm an acquired taste. You don't like me? Acquire some taste. It's always surprised me just how lame most of Bethany's taglines are. When life gives me limes, I make margaritas. As she's such a great housewife. Karen Huger always delivers them with a wink as well. You can try to tear me down, but the grand dame never crumbles. Claudia Jordan had one of the most unfortunate taglines of all time, given her fate. Don't hate me because I'm beautiful. Hate me because I'm here to stay. I still haven't settled on a favorite tagline of all time, but I'm interested to hear what other people's favorite taglines are. And if you've made one for yourself, let me know. If you liked the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. If you want to connect on social media, my ads for both Twitter and Instagram are deeply super fish. I'll link them below. But I'll look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye! The fun bus is leaving, and this time, I'm in the driver's seat.